Hello friends, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel P Talk. And in this uh, video, we will learn about the basic concept of clustering and specifically in WebLogic server. So what is WebLogic cluster? So what is a cluster? Okay, if we talk about uh, in a generic way, okay, what is a cluster? So cluster at a high level is a computer cluster is a group of two or more computers or nodes that run similar services in parallel to achieve a common goal. Okay, so this is not about uh, only a specific computer or nodes. Okay, it can be applicable for web servers or application servers, uh, where you have multiple parallel uh, servers or application servers are running in parallel. Okay, and that is because to provide uh, the scalability and high availability. Okay, so what does it mean? Like, uh, as of today, we are in an enterprise business where we have a multiple uh, customers, multiple stakeholders are accessing our websites right, for uh, on day to day basis and uh, they all are doing a lot of transactions. OK, so uh, if, if we take example of only Facebook, OK, there are billions of users of Facebook across the world. OK, and they all use the Facebook website, right? Uh, uh, from the mobile device, from the web browsers. OK, so now you can try to understand then what would be the load of uh, uh, applications, okay, on the servers. So when we think, uh, when we talk about such kind of a huge load, okay, then there could be uh, a certain problem. There could be a problem with the performance with the applications, right? And in that case, okay, there is a solution that we call as a uh, high availability solution where we define a cluster. And cluster is nothing but but about a group of similar set of services. Okay, so similar set of services means that I have to run similar kind of applications in a cluster so that all can serve a same copy of the application to the end users. For example, if we're talking about Facebook, that uh, if there could be a cluster of 10 servers and all 10 servers are using the same Facebook application, then I have a 10 servers in a cluster and then the request of the end users will be served by the all 10 computers or 10 servers, those, those are running the Facebook application. Okay, so this allows workload consisting of a high number of individuals parallelizable tasks to be distributed among the node in the cluster. Okay, so this means that when we talk about a high available configurations, okay, and if we have n number of uh, servers in a cluster, that means the requests are distributed across all the nodes in our cluster. Those are running the same or similar application. So as a result, these tasks can leverage the combined memory and processing power of each computer to increase overall performance, okay? So what we are doing in that case, if we have a 10 number of servers in a cluster, that means all 10 servers are using the same applications. And then we are saying that the request of the end users are getting distributed among the 10 servers, okay? Then we, that means we are equally or properly using uh, the compute power of all the 10 servers. So when we talk about WebLogic server clustering, so WebLogic server cluster consists of multiple WebLogic server instances, we call this as the managed servers, running simultaneously and working together to provide increased scalability and reliability, okay? The same concept that uh, I have just discussed a couple of minutes back that in, in specific in terms of WebLogic where we have a managed servers and when we define a cluster, then we, do, uh, we assign multiple managed server inside a cluster. That means if I have four managed servers, inside a cluster, that means I have to deploy the same application uh, in all four managed servers, okay? So that application I can target to managed servers or I can target to cluster, okay? And then the client request will be served by all of the four managed servers, okay? So a WebLogic server cluster consists of multiple managed servers running simultaneously, running the same application and working together to provide increased scalability and reliability, okay? So as I said, uh, uh, the cluster that we use that is to increase the performance of application and for scalability and reliability, okay? So we'll discuss about the scalability and reliability in next slide, so what does it mean, okay? So a WebLogic server cluster provides the benefit, scalability and high availability. So scalability means that means suppose that tomorrow, today uh, you have a customer base of around 10,000 10, users and then you think that, okay, probably today uh, four managed server would be sufficient for me, but tomorrow, uh, your business is growing and then after a couple of months or in a year you think that your user base is going to be increased or maybe it is increased from 1000 to 2000 that time you may have to scale your application as well because your application uh, would not able to 
uh, to cater the demand of 2000 users because it has been designed for 1000 users initially or maybe with certain kind of a buffer of 20 20 30 percent but it has never been designed for to cater the request of 2000 or 3000 kind of a users so that means at that time you have to scale your application right dynamically so in a cluster when we say that about a cluster run the similar kind of applications on multiple managed servers so if today you have a four managed servers then tomorrow if you think that that you need few more managed servers to cater the demand of end users then you can easily add few more managed servers in the cluster okay dynamically okay and then they will start serving the request of end user so that is called a scalability how you can scale your uh, applications according to the future demands and in the future and when we talk about high availability okay so high availability in the sense you have a uh, multiple uh, services are running in parallel for same set of application okay so in case any one of the application server goes down then you should have another parallel server running in parallel and those servers can uh, process the client request okay so in a web logic server cluster applications processing can continue when a server instance fail you your cluster application component by deploying them on multiple server instances in the cluster. So if a server instance on which a component is running fails, another server instance on which that component is deployed can continue application processing. So means that if you have a cluster and then you have a multiple managed servers in a cluster, and if any managed server goes down, the other servers would able to serve the, uh, the, access, the end user uh, request, right? And when we talk about the features of a cluster, that means our WebLogic Server cluster consists of multiple WebLogic Server instances running simultaneously and working together to provide increased scalability and reliability. Similarly, in line with the discussion that we have done so far, our WebLogic Server consists of multiple managed servers. Those are running in parallel with the same set of applications and that it can provide you the scalability and reliability. Right. So once you have a multiple managed servers are running and you know that okay, in case any one or two managed server will goes down, then I have other uh, managed servers are there to serve the request. That means your reliability is going to be increased, right? So that is called reliability. The cluster appears to clients to be a single web logic server instance. That means whoever the user is accessing the application, okay, they really don't need to take care about the backend number of servers. If they are connected to managed server one and that application server, that managed server goes down, then your request will automatically fail over to some other managed servers or or, or client is really don't need to worry about to, from which servers my requests are accessing. So that means a cluster appears to client as a single web logic server instance. The server instances that constitute a cluster can run on the same machine or can be located on different machines. Okay, that is another feature of uh, the clustering where uh, the all the managed servers that you have in a cluster that you can have in a single server or you can scan or you can span that all these managed servers in the different machines okay that is called a, a clustering concept okay that is uh, called a horizontal clustering okay uh, if you have everything on a single machine every that means all the resources all the managed servers are running on a single server physical server okay that is called a vertical clustering Okay, so we'll see in the next slide what are the pros and cons of that one. So you can increase the cluster's capacity by adding additional server instances to the cluster on an existing machine, or you can add machines to the cluster to host the in incremental server instances. Okay, so that means if in, in future, if you want to increase the capacity of your application, then you can simply add a few more managed servers. You can deploy the same application to the managed servers, and then you can easily scale your applications. Right? And then each server instance in a cluster must run the same version of WebLogic. And that this is a prerequisite for your WebLogic server that the all the managed server in a cluster must should be run with the same version of WebLogic server. Now type of clusters. Okay. So we have a two type of cluster. The first one is about the horizontal cluster. Okay. So horizontal is meant that you have um, if you have multiple managed servers in, in a cluster, that means you have deployed all four clusters in different physical servers, okay? So that means if you have uh, uh, server one and server two, two servers, okay, managed servers, suppose that we have two physical servers, server one and server two, and you want to uh, have a two managed servers, managed server one and managed server two in your cluster, okay? Then you have the capability where you can uh, create managed server one on server one, physical server one, and then you can create managed server two on physical server two, okay? And the advantages of this horizontal clustering is that in case of hardware failure, the server can process with the request, it has better performance as the system used in different. That means if I'm saying that uh, if I have everything, if I have 
all the managed servers are running on a single physical server and in, in that case uh, if that server got crash okay then everything will be get crash yeah? your application will not work right until and unless you will bring up that server so to avoid this kind of outage or you can say to avoid a single point of failure right you can have a multiple physical servers and multiple managed servers are running across the physical server so in case any physical server goes down your other managed ser manage servers those are running in different physical servers can able to uh, serve the request right and uh, disadvantage you can say maintaining two different servers is difficult and expensive okay and it's not about two uh, servers only because in a real uh, professional or business environment there are n number of uh, you know, uh, uh physical servers are there in a cluster okay so definitely you have if you have a, if, uh, physical servers are getting increased then you have uh, you have to spend a lot of on then the maintenance of all the servers okay and when we talk about vertical cluster so vertical cluster is means that you have all the managed servers and all the resources in a single physical machine okay so sometimes it is happened that you have a machine which is having a good hardware configurations okay and uh, probably in that case you may need to, uh, your all uh, the managed servers and the cluster in a single physical machine with high power performance okay uh, but that is not a recommended configuration for the production okay because as i said it is a single point of failure in case that server will get crash your all the application will go down so it is not a recommended architecture for the production but yes sometime it is uh configured for the non-production environment like for development and for testing and for quality in, uh, instances okay where there could be a single high performance machine and then you can have a multiple installation of web logic and then you can have a multiple domains uh for your different different uh, instances for example one domain for your quality one domain for testing and one domain for some uh for some quality or testing or some different like uh, the kind of uh, environments you have according to your uh, business requirement you can have a multiple domains in a single physical machine but that is not a recommended approach for the production okay and when we talk about clustering in web logic so you have a two type of clusters in web logic one is the very basic cluster okay uh, so whatever so far we have discussed about that is about a basic cluster like you have uh, multiple managed servers you have defined a cluster and then you have uh, assigned certain managed servers in the cluster and tomorrow if you think that your uh, demand is getting increased and therefore you need a high performance you need few more managed servers to cater the demand of users then you can add few more managed servers that means you have to create uh, managed servers and then you have to deploy your all the resources whether it is a application data source connection pool or or, or whatever the configurations that you have uh, deployed or uh, uh, to uh, all the other existing managed servers same set of applications and target resources you need to deploy or target to your new managed servers that you are going to create okay that is a, some kind of a manual stuff but when we talk about a dynamic cluster that means a dynamic cluster can uh, scale itself without any human intervention okay this is something about an extension to the cloud computing okay where uh, uh, where uh, the resources are, are created and uh, brought down automatically based on the user load okay user requirements and the load on the applications okay so so for example that to my, if i have a four managed servers in a cluster and then uh, maybe my uh, demand is uh, high uh, during a certain period of time maybe in a, uh, three months in a year i could have a high load on my application and i need all four managed servers to be up and running but maybe for rest seven months i have a less load on my application and then the request can be catered by two managed servers so my application uh, would automatically uh, bring up all the four servers when uh, in, in in the period of three months when the load is high end but for rest of the month it can automatically brought down the two of the managed servers so it will save my cost okay resource cost and other lot of costs that are related with the applications okay so dynamic cluster provides you easy scaling of a logic cluster by adding and removing managed server instances on demand they contain one or more dynamic servers the dynamic servers are based on a single server template that guarantees that every member of the cluster is exactly the same so that means uh, as i was saying that uh, in a cluster all the applications are running same set of applications run in a cluster right in all managed servers and all the resources same resources are deployed to the same managed servers okay so when we talk about dynamic cluster which uh, automatically scale itself based on the requirement okay for for example as of now i have two managed servers are running and then in next 15 minutes and 20 minutes if the demand that the end user requests are getting increased and then system think that okay now i need one or two more managed servers so if it is a dynamic cluster it will automatically spend one or two more managed server dynamically at the runtime okay and 
And if you have a server template, okay, there was server template. That means in the server template, maintain all uh, the configurations that is existing on uh, on the all the uh, managed servers so that they are in cluster as of now running. Okay, so when it span new managed servers, it use the server template and then it deploy the same configurations on the new managed servers as well okay for example if i have if i have two managed servers running in a cluster and and some shopping cart application is deployed on both managed servers and three or four jdbc data sources are deployed in all two managed servers and certain gms configurations are also deployed on two managed servers okay so when this dynamic cluster automatically scaling scale one or two more managed servers it automatically create one or two more managed servers during the scaling, auto scaling, okay. So it will automatically uh, deploy the shopping cart application on on the new managed server. So it will it will automatically target the data source and then all the JMS resources to the managed server. However, when we talk about basic cluster, there you have to manually create the managed servers and then you have to manually deploy all the resources to the managed servers. But in dynamic cluster, it is automatically taken care by the server template, which maintain a common configurations of all the servers in the cluster. So thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe my channel and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you very much.